The number of blades was a key consideration we had to think about when the initial design of the structure. There were many options, but we decided to limit the choice between either two or a three blade of design. Both had several advantages and disadvantages. For example, theoretically, a three blade of design would have a higher coefficient of power than an equivalent two bladed one. This arises because a three blade of design is more like an actuating disc, which is where the theoretical values originate from. A two blade of design also has a disadvantage of being structurally weaker due to fluctuating dynamic stresses at different points of rotation. However, as the main brief specified a weight limit, and the theoretical increase in power would be far subdued by the 50% increase in mass, it was decided to go for a two bladed design. When selecting an airfoil, the most important characteristic was the maximum lift to drag ratio. Using an online selector, the airfoil SG6043 was selected. This shape has a very high maximum of the drag ratio and would therefore be the best choice. Another aspect of airfoil selection is determining the twist and cord length at different points along the blade. The twist is used to ensure the airfoil is always acting in the most efficient way regarding lift production, as this is what will produce the most torque. In the case of SD6043, this curves approximately 9 degrees. A changing cord is also essential in order to reduce the drag that the blades will feel. This will require tapering towards the tip. The final consideration in the airfoil selection is the tip speed ratio. This value is a ratio of seen wind speed to the speed the tip moves at. For this, we chose a value of 4.7. So we discretized our blade into small segments and analyzed the forces acting on each segment um, using the method called blade element method or BEM. This approach is implemented in MATLAB and the lift and drag forces of the blade is calculated using the CL to alpha curve of the selected airfoil and, and the local velocity. Notice that the ring vortex generated downstream of the, uh, of the blade is not taken into account. So Q-blade simulation is used to verify the data we get. In stress analysis, there are two main stresses acting on the turbine, which is the centripetal force and the bending induced force. Each element of the blade will experience a centrifugal force in its frame of reference. This will lead to a stress distribution along the blades in the actual direction, mathematically shown here. Implementing this concept in MATLAB, we calculated the stress distribution and found that the maximum stress experienced was at 0.8 megapascals at a distance of 0.1 meters from the root of the blade. Bending moment is given by this equation, where Fa is the resultant aerodynamic force. We assume that lift is much greater than drag and the bending in the direction of the cord line is insignificant. Therefore, we arrive to this equation, and maximum stress is given by this equation, where I is the second moment of area we estimated following this great person's paper in 1968. The airfoil thickness is taken as the maximum distance, and all stresses due to bending is in order of 10 to the power 2 pascals. So the overall stress as a superposition of both these stresses being less than the yield stress of 32 megapascals assured our design to be safe. Our turbine was designed to be two bladed to fully utilize the printing volume. We avoided using any hinge removable mechanism as they may add unpredictable effects on the structural integrity of our system. Our aim was to maximize the coefficient of power rather than the power generated. A small diameter turbine may produce less power but for the same amount of power generated, the smaller the diameter, the higher the CP we can achieve. This is because CP has an inverse relation with area which can be utilized to its full extent by a small diameter turbine. Moreover, small diameter turbines may initiate the concept of household power generation where multiple turbines can replace the need of a large diameter turbine to test the possibility of this concept and maximize the chances to excel in this current experiment we chose to go with a small diameter turbine it took five steps to fabricate a hub from a starting material first turning facing and drilling cut the material into the desired dimensions for later processes and gave it a polished surface then the polish was milled into a hexagonal shape by a four axis milling machine during this process, the milling machine also drilled a hole on the part, allowing the turbine assembly to fix to the testing shaft. After milling, a layers cut the hub from the starting material, and then we used a broaching machine to cut the keyway. Finally, mini mills drilled our group number onto the hub. 
we apply a rapid prototyping to manufacture our blades. The rough surface will then send it to improve performance. Humpback whales, one of the great behemoths of the oceans. Despite being one of the largest species of whales, these creatures are extremely maneuverable. These whales can breach their 40 ton bodies completely out of the water. Now what makes these whales different and so acrobatic? Well, they're flippers. They have large rounded tubercles along the leading edge of their flippers. These tubercles act as a passive flow control device that improve the performance and maneuverability of the flipper. The experimental analysis of finite wing models has demonstrated that the presence of these tubercles produces a delay in the angle of attack until stall, thereby increasing the maximum lift by up to 4.8% and decreasing drag by up to 40%. The delay of stall is achieved through the generation of a vortex and modification of the boundary layer, and an increase in effective span by the reduction of both spanwise flow and strength of the tip vortex. We implemented these vortex generating tubercles into our wind turbine to hopefully drastically improve the efficiency of the turbine. So what we did was to model the tubercle patterns as 9 to 11 delta wing like tubercles which decrease in size as they near the tip of the flipper, with the largest tubercles being the first and fourth. So we just finished testing our prototype for the household power system, our turbine for that, and uh, how do you think it went? Uh, well, well, one thing I noticed is that uh, the trimmer started at a compa comparatively high wind speed. Okay. Um, uh, after some discussion with the group mates, um, we concluded that the problem may come from the large twist angles, uh, okay. the roots. Um, a large twist angle means that the angle of attack between the blade sections and the incoming flow is quite high, uh, which may lead to flow separation and stall. Um, reduction in twist angle delays the stall on the blade surface, increase the lift and uh, the rotational speed, potentially the power up. During the test section, mm -hmm. we found that uh, our turbine was quite yeah. small. Right? Right. Um, do you think uh, we should increase the size of the blades by any chance? Mm, yeah, it was quite small to be honest. But since our turbine is far from reaching the mass limit set by our project, we could lend in the blades which would increase the aspect ratio thereby increasing lift and as you know it, redu it was reduced induced drag. This could have been done by implementing a folding mechanism to cope with the 3D printing size limit keeping in mind the constraints of optimum TSR, RPM and structural stability. Larger blades would also have a wider swept area which would produce more power. So I feel yeah, it, it would be a wise choice to increase the length of the blade. Something very fascinating about the blades is that we have tubercles. Uh, mm -hmm. That's such a fascinating concept. And how did it affect our performance? Uh, well, uh, the tubercles had a considerable, considerable improvement on the performance. Okay. Uh, the turbine with the tubercles on started spinning at a lower wind speed. Okay. Uh, moreover, the pressure coefficient was higher with them on, uh, which indicates that uh, they did play a role on delaying separation. That's really good. Uh, the size and position of the tubercles may also matter. Okay. Um, uh, more wind tunnel testing could be conducted to find the best tubercle arrangement. Okay. Mm. okay. Uh, so let's talk about the drag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about the different types of drags that play a uh, major role in our turbine? Yeah, that's such an important factor. So as we know, there are three types of drags: uh, surface drag, induced drag, and uh, there is pressure drag. And uh, more care, I feel, should be taken for ha to have better sand quality. Smooth surface may reduce confriction drag and thereby reducing surface drag as a whole. A blade with higher aspect ratio, that means a blade with longer, with a higher length, would encounter a smaller induced drag compared to our blade. We knew this before and therefore we used tubercles to give us an edge in terms of reducing pressure drag. Although the location of the tubercles wasn't the optimum choice, the vortex inducer, which is the tubercles, was placed at the trailing edge, thereby energizing the flow at that particular location. This led to the flow over the surface to still remain laminar and bring in effects of pressure drag. This was one part of a case. Our second part, we had the tubercles in the leading edge, which could have increased our surface drag by a huge extent because it energizes the flow before it came to our surface. So these both were contradictory statements and we did test both of them and the results were satisfactory. Okay.